Hey there, this is Kamal, and in this video, we're going to learn about Markdown. So, let's get this started. Okay, so what is Markdown? Markdown is a lightweight markup language that you can use to add formatting elements to a plain text document. In a sense, what it means is that you can add some specific styling like making the text bold or adding images or adding links or adding headings. All of that can be achieved by using Markdown. The only difference between this and a Microsoft Word document is the fact that in a Microsoft Word document, you use a visual interface to actually create and type that document. Whereas in a Markdown file, you have to actually manually type that syntax. So you have to follow a particular syntax and using that syntax, you have to add all the elements. So in that way, it is actually similar to an HTML document. But instead, in a Markdown file, you actually don't have any tags. You have a simple syntax. You have to follow that to make the text bold or add images or make it link to a new document. And all of that can be achieved using a simple syntax structure. So essentially, Markdown is actually being used everywhere in the world. And it's mainly used to create readme files for a GitHub repo, where you actually see the documentation of a repository. All of that documentation is present inside a file called as readme.md. And there, that md represents the Markdown file. So you have to have a bit of idea of Markdown syntax to actually create that documentation. Other than that, it is also being used to create blog posts in various websites. And also, it is used mainly in static site generators. So with that out of the way, let's get this started. So this is my project and in here I have a file called as readme.md and that md represents the markdown. So let's close that off. Similar to how you have headings inside an HTML document, here as well you have headings and to type a heading inside a markdown file, you have to first type in hash, give a space and type the text. Let's save that and to actually see what's happening here, I'm going to use an extension to open that and this is what actually is being outputted. Okay. So similar to how you have six types of headings inside a HTML document here as well, you have six types of headings and here each hash represents the type of heading. So one hash represents H1, two hashes represent H2 and three hashes represent H3. Similarly, it goes on. So these are the six types of headings. Similarly, if you want to create a paragraph, you don't need to have any syntax. You can just directly type in the text. So let's say it's going to be Let's say I want to make this paragraph italic. What you can do is that let's duplicate this, give a space. And then to make this italic, you have to add an asterisk before the text and also an asterisk after the text. And that's going to make this text italic. And you can see the preview as well. Similarly, let's say I want to make this text bold. To do that, instead of actually having a single asterisk, you're going to have two asterisks. That is one before this and two asterisks after this. So that's going to make it bold. So now let's say you want to have both of them. That is, it's going to have bold and it's also going to be an italic version. So to do that, you have to have three asterisks before this and three asterisks after the text. So as you can see here, you get italic and also bold. The next thing are lists. So similar to how you have an ordered list and ordered list inside an HTML document, here as well, you have two types of lists. One is unordered and the other is ordered. So to make an ordered list, you have to first type in the number, give a dot, space and the text itself. And to have an unordered list, you have to have hyphen, space, then the text. So as you can see here, you have the ordered list and the unordered list. You can also have a nested list as well. So it's like an ordered list inside of an unordered list or vice versa. So let's say I want to have an unordered list inside of an ordered list. So I'm going to type the ordered list first. And in here, instead of actually going to two, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to type in hyphen, then the text, then I'm going to end it with an ordered list. You can have a horizontal line as well. And to create a horizontal line, you're going to type in three hyphens or three dashes, and that's going to create a horizontal line. Now to actually include images, what you have to do is that, let's say I have an image here called as bg.jpg. So you have to include that. So what I'm going to do is that below this, I'm going to first type in an exclamation mark, then square brackets. And in the square brackets, you can type anything that you want. So after the square brackets, you have to give parentheses. And in here, you have to type in the name of the file. And if you scroll down, you can see the output. So this text that is present inside the square bracket is going to represent the text that you're going to see when you hover over the image inside a browser. So we can give it as, let's say, 
So this is an image of a forest path. So inside the browser, whenever you hover over this image, automatically this text will be displayed. Now to create links, the syntax is pretty much similar, but instead of actually having that exclamation mark, you're going to just have the brackets, the square brackets, and in this, you're going to have the text which you are going to display. So let's say I'm going to display it as link one. After that, I'm going to give the parentheses, and in here, you have to actually type in the URL. So let's say I want to link to Google. So whenever you click on this link one, you're going to go to google.com. So the main thing that you have to remember in a markdown file is that there's multiple ways of doing the same thing. Like for example, in this paragraph where you have the bold text, instead of having two asterisks, you can also have. So as you can see here, even if you have two underscores before and after, it's actually doing the exact same thing. So you have to remember there's actually multiple ways of doing the exact same thing in a markdown file. But if you know one way, then that's more than enough. So for this link as well, instead of actually having this, what you can do is that, let's say I don't want this text. I just want to have what is being displayed here directly to be displayed here. So to do that, we're gonna have two arrows, the left and right, that is the lesser and the greater sign. And in between, we're gonna have the link. And that's gonna do the exact same thing, but instead of actually displaying the text that is shown here, it's gonna actually display the exact text that you type here. So this has to be a valid link, okay? For that to work, it has to be a valid link. And also you can have a structure with these links as well. So let's say you have multiple links inside your markdown file and you don't want to type those each and every time that you have to output that link. So what you can do is that you can have something like this. So what we're actually doing here is that instead of actually typing that URL directly, we're gonna have that URL separately placed somewhere else and you can access that URL by using this. So what I'm doing is that I'm just directly giving the text that is to be shown. And after that, instead of giving the URL, I'm using this short notation to actually represent this. So this whole thing is equivalent to this. So by implementing this, what you're doing is that you're actually splitting the whole link or the whole syntax into two parts, where the second part is reusable wherever you want inside the page. So that's another way of using the links. Now to create a block code, you have to type in the return symbol, then you have to give a space and then type in the text. And that's going to create a block code. You can have another block code as well. And if you want, you can also make this bold. So let's say I'm going to give two asterisk here and that's going to make this bold. So now let's say I want to have a bit of space in between these two lines. So generally to achieve that, we directly give that space. But if you do that same thing here, what's going to happen is that it's going to automatically add that greater than symbol here. If you don't have that symbol, it's going to split this into two block codes. But if you want this whole thing to be a single block code, but you want to have that space as well, then you can just type in that greater than symbol and that's going to be a whole block code. So now let's say I want this block code to be a subset of this block code. So to make that happen, you have to type in another greater than symbol and that's gonna indent this block code inside the original block code. So now let's say you have something like this. And as you can see here, this asterisk symbol is making this a bold text. But let's say I don't want this to be bold and instead I want to actually display this asterisk symbol inside my document. To make that happen, you have to escape this syntax structure. So to do that, you're gonna have the backward slash and that's gonna escape the structure, but it's gonna only escape the first asterisk. So if you want that to be applied to both of them, you have to give it for the both of them as well. And as you can see here, if you do that, then automatically those two asterisk symbols will be displayed on the text directly and it will not be outputted as a bold text. And the last main thing is that, let's say you want to output a particular syntax from a programming language. To achieve that, what you can do is, you can actually type the syntax inside backward text. So it's something like this. So here, echo is a function that we use to print statements in PHP. And this echo word is actually a function. So to highlight that, we're gonna use this backward text and that's gonna output it as a code syntax. So that is a syntax of a basic markdown file. But there are some drawbacks to this. As you can see here, we can't actually have more than a single word inside this code method. And that is because if you have to output a large code block, you can't achieve that using this backward text. 
And also we haven't actually seen how we can create tables in this. And if you want to have your own styling to any of these elements, then you can't have any CSS styling structure because there are no classes and IDs to this. So to overcome all of these, we have an extended version to this called as extended markdown. So let's now see some of the basic syntax in that extended markdown as well. So the first main thing is that inside of the extended markdown, you can actually have individual code blocks. So to actually create a code block, the syntax for that is something like this. So a syntax starts with three backward ticks and ends with three backward ticks. So anything that is placed in between these two will be outputted as a code block. And also to make this visually even better, you can actually type in the programming language that you're using inside this code block. Since I'm using echo, which is part of PHP, if I type in PHP, then it's going to automatically add the syntax highlights to the functions present inside PHP. Now to create tables, the syntax for that is something like this. So as you can see here, this has created a table and to separate the heading from the body, we're going to use hyphens and it doesn't matter how many hyphens you use. Even if you have only a single hyphen, that's going to still work and that's going to separate the head from the body. As you can see here, the head is a little bolder compared to the body elements. And apart from this, you can also align this to the left, to the center or to the right. So to actually align them to the left, you can actually type in colon and then the hyphen and that's going to align it to the left. But let's say you want to align it to the middle. You can do that by having the colon to the left side and also to the right side. That's going to align it to the center. Now let's say you want to align it to the right. To make that, you're going to have the colon at the end, that is to the right side. And that's going to align the text to the right. Apart from this, you can also create footnotes. So to create a simple footnote, the syntax is something like this. So first you're going to have the text and then it's going to show the number which is defining the value or the definition of this footnote. So this one will be directed to this. So here, as you can see, when you click on this, you're going to go to this where it's going to show the definition of what is being displayed here. Okay. And you can also have a multi-line footnote as well. So let's say you want to have two lines, then you can add that. And to make that a multi-line, you have to first indent it. Okay. So this is another line and that's going to be a multi-line footnote. Apart from this, you can also have strike throughs and the syntax is something like this. So it's going to have two tildes before and after, and that's going to define a strike through. Okay. You can even create a task list. So to create a task list, the syntax is something like this. So this is the syntax. So you have to give a hyphen and then brackets and then the text. So as you can see here, if it is empty, that means it's not been checked yet. And if it has X in it, that means it has been checked. Okay. And if you click on this automatically, X will be added here. And if you uncheck this automatically, X will be removed from here. And the main benefit of using this extended markdown is the fact that you can actually have IDs and classes associated to a particular heading. So syntax is something like this. So as you can see here, this is an H3 heading and to this, we're actually applying a ID. Okay. And this ID is not currently defined. That is because we don't have a style sheet, but if you have a style sheet linked to this, then you can actually have the styling properties taken from that style sheet. And if you want to actually have a class here, you can just remove this hash and type in a dot and that's going to be a class. So in a generic markdown file, you can apply this styling. That is the ID and classes only to a heading. But in some other markdown syntaxes, you can actually have this ID and classes associated with images, links and everything else. And also one last thing is that you can actually have emojis present inside your markdown syntax as well. So if you want to do that, you can go to Google and type in Emojipedia. So this is the website where you can search for any emoji that you want. Let's say I want to take the fire symbol from here. So you can open that and you can just click on copy and go to the syntax file. And here you can just paste it. 
and automatically that will be pasted and it will be outputted as well. So this is the syntax of a standard markdown file, but there are other alternatives as well. And in some of those alternatives, you can actually use the IDs and classes to not only the headings, you can apply them to all the other elements present inside the markdown as well. So if you want to create a readme file inside a GitHub repo, then this syntax is more than enough for you. And even if you want to create a blog post inside any of the websites, then this syntax is more than enough. And also I'll add some comments to this so that it's easy for you to understand what's going on here. And I'll upload this to the GitHub repository and that link will be there in the description down below. So if you want, you can go to GitHub and fork this into your own account and use this as a cheat sheet to the markdown syntax. So that's it for this video guys. I hope you like what I've seen till now. If you did, then please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe as well. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.